King's Custom Garage. In this episode, we're going to get the frame coated with some rust barrier, and we may do, do a few other odds and ends, but for the most part, we're going to focus on getting the frame coated in some rust barrier. I've got some rust barrier that I'm going to do the frame, and I'm going to get most of the frame coated. That way, it's already done, over with, and out of the way. Um, in hopes that once we get to the point that we don't have to take the bed or anything like that back off, we won't have to do it just to coat the frame uh, and it'll make it easier to get everything coated with the bed off and out of the way. Um, if you remember, before I put the cab on, I did coat the, the area underneath the cab. Uh, more than likely the cab may end up having to come back off. I'm not 100% certain yet. Um, if it doesn't, it doesn't, but if it does, I may even do a second coat just under the cab. Um, I'm going to do a pretty good thick coat on, on the, the rear section under the bed. Um, but uh, I think that's what I'm going to do in this video. And then after that's done, once we put the bed back on, I'll probably address the tailgate and stake pockets and, and other issues with the bed. Um, just because in hopes once I get the bed on and get the tailgate mounted and all that, maybe I won't have to take it back off. Um, that, that's my plans anyways. Uh, now later down the road, you know, if we end up bagging the truck or, or anything like that and, and we, it's easier to take the bed off, then I'll take the bed off then. But for now, I'm not going to bag it anytime soon. I don't have plans to anytime soon. Uh, for now, I just want to get it on the road and, and drive it some. Um, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and coat the frame and I'll show you what I'm going to use to do that. All right. So this is mostly the area that I'm talking about. You can kind of see a little bit, but right in here is roughly where my line is, where I stopped coating from under the, the cab. So I'm going to get the bed back off. I'll have to pull the running boards off and the fenders off. And then I'll get the bed pulled back off and I'm going to try and get from about there back coated. Um, I'm going to do the frame rails. I'm going to do uh, the rear end, the leaf springs. I'm going to do all of it. Uh, I still need to come in and do another brace right in here, but I'll have enough rust barrier left over to do it. Um, I've used this stuff before, so you can get quite a bit out of a can. But I'm going to use this Dupla Color Rust Barrier, um, POR15 uh, or POR15, I've heard it called both. Is the best thing I've ever used, but I had this, so I'm just going to use it. Uh, I don't know if you've watched, I have a previous video uh, on uh, the 58 Plymouth Belvedere. Uh, I used this on the frame of that also. Uh, so it works good. Uh, it, it's, it's really strong smelling wise. So I suggest either well ventilated or wear a respirator. I've got a little cheap re respirator that I'm going to wear. Um, but I'm going to start by doing a little bit of disassembly. I'm going to get the running boards back off of it. Uh, I may, I may leave the fenders on the bed. Uh, I'm just not sure. It's probably going to make it more difficult for me to get the bed off with the fenders on it. So I'll probably just pull the fenders off just to make it easier. Um, but I'm going to start by doing that. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement Everything I do so instinctive and so passionate Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I gotta vent better against people who patented Being negative when you should be getting after it 
I got facts over facts over tracks. This and that, spitting slow, spitting fast. I could roast, I could gas. Think I'm okay at last, but I don't know if that can erase all the past. And the pettiness, a reflection of the emptiness. Hilarious, you think you're worth my time? You're delirious, mysterious because you hide behind a fake exterior. Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior. Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag. I want you to hear words, you can say them back. I want you to feel free from the chains at last and to believe in what you got. It was built to last, yeah. Now that I've been put through hell, I never got anyone's help. I had to do it all myself. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. Of being incompetent Mental health is confidence Dreams and some honestness I'm not here to save the day That's for you to take away I could play a million mind games But instead I say Something not illogical Something that is typical Rub it on and watch right. it go Make My camera died right at the end last night So I went ahead and just called it a night uh, It was pretty late It was like 12, 31 o'clock in the morning probably um, But uh, I was getting started Today, I was going to get it jacked up so I could get the bottom side of the frame and all that. Uh, and I had heard something dragging in, in one of the brakes on the rear. So I, I pulled the tire off and pulled the drum, and literally everything <laughs> fell out. So uh, I'm going to add, I, I was going to go through it and see what it needed, anyways, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and add brakes drums a hardware kit and all that good stuff uh probably even going to replace the wheel cylinders they look pretty rough i don't even think i would try to clean those up i'll just get some new ones um so yeah i figured i'd show you that i mean literally everything fell out looked like they had been driving it like that for a while uh we never drove the truck it was a, a 2001 Ford Ranger Edge Edition. We never drove the truck. Uh, it needed a fuel pump when we got it, but we mainly got it for the engine and uh, frame. A buddy of mine needed an engine for one, so we used the engine for it and stripped the rest, and I took the frame. But So we never drove it, but apparently it was way overdue for some uh, rear brake shoes. There's no brake shoe material left. I didn't even see any fall out. <laughs> well, look, there's part of a spring that's completely flat. <laughs> I don't know what that's from. So yeah, we'll get some brakes put on the list. Uh, I figured they were pretty rough being that the truck uh, I believe the truck originally come from up north. Um, the cab and, and body was just really bad, but other than there was just a little bit of rod on this rear section of the frame and the spare tire mount that I cut out. Uh, for the most part, I haven't really seen any. I mean, there's been some surface rust on the frame, as you've seen all the dust flying, but, uh, I mean, I'm cleaning it up as best as I can and I haven't really found anything. This cross member is probably a little rougher than I like, but um, it don't have no, uh, it's got holes in it, but those are, I believe those to be factory stamped holes. I don't think any of those are rust holes. So uh, it's not a big concern right now. Uh, I've coated it really, really good with that rust barrier. So hopefully won't, we won't have to worry about it. But other than that, that one cross frame support and just a little on the frame, end of the frame rails on the rear, that's only really the only rust I've found on the frame so far. So I think the frame will be fine. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to cut y'all on and show you that. I thought it was kind of funny. Uh, I haven't pulled the other side yet. I knew this side, the sound, 
I thought the sound that I heard was coming from this side, and it had a little bit of a, a friction when you tried to roll it. It, it would roll, but it was uh, – you could feel it grabbing when you tried to, to push it around. Uh, so uh, I don't know how much more filming I'll, I'll film of me coating the frame. I mean, the bottom side – is going to be the headache of doing it. Uh, I'm going to try to do it to where I don't have to worry about the stuff dripping and falling down in my face. But uh, once I get this, uh, the bottom side of the frame and all that coated, uh, I'll probably cut you back on, and and we'll see what we're going to do from there. All right, guys. So I got the bottom of the frame done. Uh, I got the rear uh, diff done. Uh, as you can see or probably see, I've started on some other stuff, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Uh, I feel like the the coating the frame is going to be kind of a short video, um, but I did get everything. I got the bed put back on it. Everything's pretty much bolted back down. Um, the the underside's coated. I've just got the evap stuff setting up there for now, but I got it cleaned up coated is I didn't worry about necessarily the backing plates for the drums I'll clean all that up when I get new drums and and all that I wasn't concerned with that it cleaned up rather nice I believe uh, there was there was a lot of just gunk and road grime and and stuff built up on the rear chunk uh, I probably laid up under it for altogether probably a couple hours just chipping and wire wheeling the the rear chunk and the rear axle but uh it turned out it turned out decent i may look at getting a new diff cover um it, it's fine it it was a little flaky but I might just get a new one um, whenever I pull that one off. We'll see how bad it really is. If it feels thin or anything like that, I'll probably just replace it. But I think it looks good. Um, I don't know why. There's a couple spots that turned out more glossy. And I had a, can, a spray can and a, I believe that was a quart or a pint. I don't remember. Um but they were both flat black, but there's a couple spots, and I'm pretty sure those spots were brushed on. I don't, I don't think I sprayed those areas. I don't know why those little spots are glossier, but I've had the idea maybe uh, later down the road, maybe even spraying the frame with some semi-gloss black just to give it a little bit of a shine. I don't want it to be super shiny, but I look at it. If it's got a little bit of a gloss to it, I know from experience, if you get any kind of dirt, mud, or anything like that up on the frame rails, it's a lot harder to clean off uh, if it's flat paint. Uh, I know this ain't necessarily paint, it's rust barrier, but I've had the, the thought to do a semi-gloss maybe over the whole entire frame just so it's easier to clean. Um, I don't intend on taking the truck through any mud holes or anything, but just in general road grime and stuff like that. So what I think I'm going to work on, I think I'm going to get this brake booster and master cylinder mounted in the firewall. I think I kind of know where it needs to go. I believe that these two holes are pretty close to where it needs to sit, but I believe they're spread farther apart than what I need. So I'm probably gonna come in here, I might make me a template off of the master cylinder, um, but I'm gonna come in here and, and get it at the height that I believe it needs to be at, which is about where those are sitting, and get the holes put, the hole in the center. Hopefully the firewall will be strong enough once we get a pedal in there and, and all that, it won't flex the firewall. Uh, if it tries to flex the firewall or the firewall is just not strong enough to necessarily hold it, I don't see why that would be the case because it, it being newer power brakes, um, you don't have to push the pedal as hard as you would on, say, this, this year a truck. Um, 
So I think it'll be fine. Uh, then there's this support brace here, and there's a support brace here. So I think maybe right in the middle, um, and then they'll have you know the the other section off the inside for the the brake pedal. I don't have that right now. Reason being, the truck was originally a, a, a manual, and I'm going to go back with an automatic, uh, just because uh, my wife plans on driving it. It's more or less going to be f more for her uh, than me, so I'm going to I'm going to I'm probably just going to go back automatic. If I was building the truck more for myself per se, I would probably stick a, a, a stick shift or a manual transmission in it. Um, but she just simpler. Uh, she would enjoy driving it and not having to worry about shifting gears and dealing with all the extra. So I'm going to go back automatic. So I didn't keep the old um, pedal assembly from under the, the dash because the clutch and brake pedal, all the whole assembly is all in one. So I'll find a pedal assembly out of an automatic uh, and use it. It, sh it should still bolt up. There shouldn't be no differences between... Uh, the master cylinder and, and all that, I would assume just the pedal assembly under the dash would be different. Um, but I think that's what I'm going to do right now. I think I'm going to try and get a little template made up maybe. Um, I've kind of set it up there. I, I ran a tape measure. I do know that the holes I don't think will line up. So I will have to put new holes. I, I'm fine with that. Um, and uh, once I get a little template made, I'll uh, I'll show you what I got. Okay. So here's what I've done. I've just made a little template of the uh, the r rough. That's just a rough estimate on the size of the hole. Uh, this is a little bit bigger than like a spray can. So I'm probably just going to use like a, a spray can. I've got some aerosol, just general purpose cleaner, I think is what it is. But it was just a little bit smaller than, than this. I used a it was a, a cutting disc that had been, you know, it was small. It was about shot um, just to get a rough size on the hole. Um, so I'm going to do it a little bit smaller than what this is in the center. And then those are my four bolt holes. And then I've got it up here. I got it leveled up and I've got my holes put where they need to go. I'm going to center punch them and drill them. And then I'm going to stick this back up there and get my center marked. And once I get my center marked and cut it out, I'm just going to go ahead and bolt it up in there for now uh, until I get the pedal assembly and all that. It'll at least be up on the firewall and not just droop down on the frame rail. So let me get those, uh, those holes center punched and drilled out, and we'll get the center hole marked out. All right, guys. So there you can see I've got it mounted. Um, what I did to get that center hole, I don't have uh, any big metal hole saws. So I took uh, a stepper bit, drilled one big hole right in the center, and then drilled a bunch of smaller holes around the edge of the line that I had marked. And I have a little, uh, it's like a, a air, uh, um, reciprocating saw. Uh, pneumatic reciprocating saw. I used it with just a small thin metal cutting blade and went in there in between those holes that I had drilled and cut that circle out and then took a carbide bit, went around it real good, cleaned it up, smoothed it up. Oh. Of course. Um, uh, cleaned everything up with a carbide bit once I had the, the hole all cleaned out and cut out uh, and bolted it up. And I did have to come in. I believe this to be a brace that, uh, like they, there was some braces that run from the firewall out to the core support area, uh, maybe toward the corners or whatever, right around where the radiator sits. Um, this bracket was in the way. So I took and notched it and cut it out so this would fit up against the firewall. Uh, if we put those braces back in, uh, maybe I can relocate this a little bit so it still kind of sits where it's supposed to. If not, I'll just make a different brace or, or something. We may not even run those braces. 
but it's on there it's bolted up um i'll still have to get a pedal assembly but we'll get that later but i, I just wanted to get that up so it wasn't drooped on the frame rail and just sitting there um i'm probably gonna pull this is the power steering pump and bracket mounting assembly and all that um for uh, the little 3.0 V6 that was in the Ranger. Uh, I had left that just because I didn't want to have to deal with the power steering fluid right now. Uh, but I'm probably going to get that pulled off. Um, maybe stick a cap on the line. I think I've got a few caps that I can cap that with. Um, just so I don't lose what's in the, the gearbox or the the, uh, the rack and pinion. Um, starting to take a little bit of shape <laughs> so something i wanted to talk about i may have found out what engine and trans i'm gonna use um i actually have a buddy that uh his cousin has um a 94 f250 i believe it was that has the 460 uh electronic fuel injection force injected 460 um it had overheated on him a couple times and then uh, it overheated real good but he had planned on uh swapping it all over i believe he said he was going to put a 7.3 in it uh i know it had overheated and whatnot but he's going to cut me a good deal on it so hopefully the block's still good maybe the heads aren't warped i'll tear it down rebuild it um clean it up real good i may look into getting a different intake and and putting uh carb swap in it and not running the efi it just depends on how everything pans out um so hopefully we'll be getting that here here soon um i wasn't planning on going with a big block but it kind of just fell into my lap so uh, that may be the way we go and i may just throw a uh, C6 automatic transmission behind it. Um, we'll probably have to do quite a bit of a work on the firewall and stuff like that to get all that fit in there. Uh, but we should have plenty of room engine bay wise uh, for it to fit. I just between the engine uh, or the between the frame rails and all that. Uh, I've seen where a couple people's put 460s in Rangers, so it should be possible for it to fit between the frame rails. We'll just have to see what all that will entail. I know a lot of the concern with putting them in Rangers was not having the room in the engine bay um, and back up against the firewall. So we should have no problem fitting it. Uh, it's just getting it between the frame rails uh, and then getting the, the firewall cut out and tunneled and, and all that. So uh, I think I'm going to probably call this a video um it may be a little bit of a shorter one um but i'm gonna finish this one and go ahead and start on my next one um not quite sure what i'm gonna do next but we'll see uh, i appreciate everybody watching don't forget to like share subscribe thanks guys see you in the next one